Buy or sell is back. The hot take machine. That is Twitter. We're on it. We're looking for the hottest takes in Major League Baseball. Of course, I put out my tweet asking for you guys to send me your hot takes, and then I'll tell you if I buy or sell them. Buy obviously means I agree. Sell means I disagree. Very easy video to understand. Before we get going into the takes, make sure you drop a like on this video. 3,000 likes shows me you want to see more of the buy or sell series. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so, so you don't miss out on any of the content. Get in the comments down below. Drop some hot takes takes next episode will be a youtube episode so make sure you're dropping your hot takes in the comment section below and drop me a follow on all my social media giraffe neck mark links in description all right let's scour twitter and let's see what we've got first off i've got 666 replies that's gotta change asap i, I don't like that juju that i don't like that all right let's address the elephant in the room let's talk about the mets and this one actually comes from the editor of the channel jackson at son of jack 13 lindor will catch fire to lead the mets to the division title all happening within the month of september yeah so you can see what i mean about the elephant in the room uh, uh, the Mets stink right now. They just flat out are terrible. And while I think Lindor probably will catch fire in September, I actually think he's going to play really well. I just don't think it's going to be enough to lead the Mets to the division in September. At the beginning of the year, I picked the Braves to win the division. Then the Braves sunk and the Mets looked like they were decent. And I thought the Mets would win it. But this team, I should have known. I've done a video on the Giants being liars who can't be trusted. That's exactly what the Mets were. While they didn't have these old aging players, they didn't play well this entire year and somehow still remained in first place. It wasn't because they were playing well. It's because the other teams were playing poorly. It's Mets team just doesn't have it this year. The roster's not hitting. The pitching's been fine. The pitching's been great, if anything. But until these bats wake up, the Mets physically can't win the division. It's just not possible. If they were in first place, maybe, but they have seven games to make back. So I'm selling this take. All right, this one comes from Rydog54. He is a card YouTuber, I would say. Big minor league prospects guy, if you want to check him out. Spencer Torkelson will hit 45 home runs in 2022. Ooh, hoo -hoo. I like this one a lot. The only reason I honestly think I have to sell this one is because I don't know if Torkelson is going to start the year on the major league level 45 home runs is a lot i mean we're probably gonna see maybe like two three guys hit that mark this year if that I, it might be really tough 45 is hard in any year especially in comerica if you put him in cincinnati baltimore i think torkelson has a better chance do i think he's gonna come up next year and play well a thousand percent i think he's a stud 45 home runs though we're selling that one rye dog all right this one comes from at not nate 99 mlb the show player top player in the game streams on twitch if you want to watch him yeah guess what i'm picking my friends sorry they have some good questions juan soto is having a better year than Bryce Harper and literally no one cares. Yeah, Juan Soto is having a better year than Bryce Harper and nobody cares. I completely buy that. I buy that Juan Soto is having a better year. Everything is higher for Juan Soto except his OPS and slugging, but he has a higher average, higher on base percentage, less home runs, but on baseball reference, he's got a 4.9 war. He's just unbelievably good and you can't blame him for playing a little poorly. I don't know. Juan Soto is sick. Better year than Harper? I, I could say so. I think that there are stats that can prove that Juan Soto is playing better than Bryce Harper. Higher OPS plus. He's got a higher WRC plus. Plus, Harper does have a slightly higher F war. I I'll buy. I think that people just assume Harper's having the better year. So to say Soto is having a better year, I think is fair. And to say that nobody cares about it kind of also feels right. The Nationals are forgotten about since they traded Scherzer and Turner. Ooh, okay. Joel Marks at Joel ZM16. Mariners snagged the last wild card spot after Yankees or Red Sox collapsed down the stretch. Ooh, I really want to buy this one. I do want to buy this one. I, I can completely believe it. I can. Mariners, man, they've just been hanging around. They've been smacking people around. Here's the thing. I don't know if the Yankees or Red Sox collapse down the stretch. It might be the Oakland A's. I'd buy and sell this, so I guess I'm gonna really just end up saying sell while I'm rooting for the Mariners. They've always been great to me. Gave me all the interviews in the world when I go to spring training. Love them. That team is just not as good as the Yankees or the Red Sox. They just, they can't be. They're playing so well, even though they're not really having any good pitchers by any means or any good hitters, but they are at the same time. It's so confusing, the Mariners. Two and a half back right now. They still have the A's in front of them as well, and you've got the Red Sox and the Yankees. The Yankees are making the playoffs. So I think that's a lot. I think the Red Sox are going to start to play a little bit better baseball as we've seen a little bit, although the bullpen's falling apart. I, I don't think this is going to be a problem though. I think the Mariners slightly missed the playoffs, but boy, I am rooting for you. I'm rooting for you guys big time. Let's go for a Yankees collapse. It's uh, just not happening. We're selling. Zach Brinkley at Oak Raiders fan 21 says, if not for the amazing season Otani is having, Aaron Judge would have a legitimate MVP chance. Would Aaron Judge have a legitimate MVP chance? I mean, Vlad Guerrero Jr exists while Vlad's cooled off a little bit since going back to Toronto. I think Vlad is the clear number two choice right now in the American League. Like if it's not Otani, it's going to be Vladdy. And maybe this is a hot take by me, but Aaron Judge is having a fantastic year. I just don't think it's MVP worthy. Is that weird to say? It's close though. It's close. It's pretty much three guys outside of Otani after him. It's Vlad Jr., Matt Olson, and Aaron Judge. All of those guys could very much win the MVP if it wasn't for Otani. Do I think Judge has the best chance? No. Do I think he has a legitimate chance? Yes. Even though this is a fake 
fake scenario, but especially with like the Yankees pushing for the playoffs, if he goes off and has a crazy month of September and Otani doesn't exist, I buy Aaron Judge being a legitimate MVP candidate for sure. All right, we got Sam Heim. It's pronounced Heim Bloom. Sam Chame, Sam Hein, SBC Heim 30. I, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, man. I'm sorry. It's probably Chame. Aaron Ashby will be the key to the Brewers playoff success. Used in an early Hater Woodruff Peralta Burns type role, multi inning high leverage reliever. I sell that one. I don't think Aaron Ashby is going to be the key to the Brewers playoff success. Do I think he will have an impact? I think there's a very good shot. This is a guy who's kind of gone up the minor league system very nicely for the Brewers. Left handed pitcher. He's come up a little bit too this year and has had some success at times. I just don't know if he has the stuff like the guys you just mentioned to be in that same kind of role, but I think he can be useful for sure. Just not the key person. So I'm selling. Carter at Boston's future. Sandy Alcantara is the most underrated pitcher in baseball. Ooh, ooh, that's really good. I mean, let's just throw out some names. I honestly do think that Walker Bueller and Brandon Woodruff are both criminally underrated. I don't feel like people talk about them enough as top five pitchers in baseball. Like, yes, I think the people who know baseball know how good they are, but I'm talking about the average fan, the casual. You're talking about top pitchers. They're going DeGrom, Kershaw, Garrett Cole, Max Scherzer, Shohei Otani, even though that's not really true. Shane Bieber, even because he won the Cy Young. We'll go as crazy as even saying Justin Verlander still. Like, they'll throw out some of the bigger names. Sandy Alcantara is super underrated. That being said, I don't think he is the most underrated. I will go with Brandon Woodruff or Walker Bueller. And it's not that people don't think they're good. It's just, I don't think people think that they're legitimately two of the top five pitchers in Major League Baseball. Maybe I'm crazy for that. I don't know. You can even go with Corbin Burns or Freddie Peralta. I think there's some other guys right now, even on that same Milwaukee Brewers team that are a little more underrated than Sandy Alcantara. That being said, Alcantara is very, very good. Ooh, I like this one a lot. Ethan S at East Saucedo 01. Reds upset Dodgers in the wild card. I want to say bye. I really do. I want to say it badly, but I, I, I can't pick against the Dodgers. They're just like clearly the best team on paper. The Giants are the best team in baseball right now, but on paper, when you look at roster construction, there's just no one better than the Dodgers. I don't really know who the Reds would pitch. I, I guess Sonny Gray, Luis Castillo, and even then, ah, I don't think it matches up with Bueller of the Dodgers in a one game series or even Scherzer or even Kershaw or even Rios. Those guys are pretty elite. I would love to say the Reds would because I like Nick Castellanos. I like Jesse Winker. I like Votto. I like a lot of the players on that team, but the Dodgers is just too good. It can very well happen. Like this isn't like a no shot. No way. But if I'm a betting man, I'm not betting on the Reds to beat the Dodgers. I'm selling this take. Ooh, Nate at real underscore Rosenthal. Brian Snicker will be the only current NL East manager that is still in the same position to start 2022. I don't think Don Mattingly gets fired. I I'm going to sell this one. I don't think Mattingly gets fired. I think Luis Rojas probably does. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I think Rojas probably gets canned or doesn't get brought back. I don't know if he's still technically like interim or whatever. Joe Girardi might get fired. Dave Martinez might. They kind of tore that entire team down. So I don't know how you can really fire David Martinez, especially when he won a World Series a couple years ago. I'm going to sell this, but that's an interesting question. And there is a world where this is true. I just don't think it's likely, which is why I'm selling. Los biggest fan at Gamer Foot On. The Padres don't make the playoffs and the Blue Jays heat up and make the playoffs. Damn, I wanted to do a buy. I wanted to do a buy so badly. I sell this one. Blue Jays ain't making the playoffs. Sorry, Jackson. Padres, I think actually legitimately might miss the playoffs. They're playing some awful baseball. Mets like, even though it's not, but it is. I just don't think the Blue Jays are making it. I, I think it's pretty unlikely that the Blue Jays get into the playoff. They're currently four and a half out. They have a lot of teams to hurdle. It just doesn't feel like it's going to happen for me, but I'm hoping. I'd like to see the Blue Jays in there too. Another really cool organization. All right, we're going to do a few more here. I'm enjoying answering these questions. Bay Area Sports Fan at S JS3948. Buster Posey is a Hall of Gamer. Might take a couple to a few ballots, but he will get in. Uh, Buster Posey's definitely a Hall of Famer. Buster Posey has solidified himself as a Hall of Famer. He's won an MVP at the catcher position, has been the best catcher in baseball for an extended period of time. I'm not talking about right now, but even then, he's playing incredible this year. You can't deny that. Buster Posey will be a Hall of Famer. Three World Series championships, MVP, Rookie of the Year. He's done it all. He's one of the best catchers to ever play. Definitely in that category of Hall of Fame worthy. Again, you want to talk about being dominant in your era? Buster Buster Posey is that catcher you think of. At least it is in my mind. I buy this. Leo at Phony Rock and Roll. Pujols will join Yachty for their final season in St. Louis. As much as I think this would be sick, I sell because I feel like the Cardinals, call me crazy, might not have a spot for Pujols. Now, a lot of you guys don't know this probably, but Pujols has been simply one of the best hitters against left-handed pitching in all of baseball this year. Like 11 home runs and 120 at-bats, a WRC plus of them like the 150s. 50% better than the average hitter against left-handed pitching this year. So he actually still has a ton of value in the Dodgers have been able to get that out of him. But I don't know if the Cardinals with Paul Goldschmidt at first base are really going to be looking to do that unless the DH is in baseball next year. Then maybe there's a chance because platooning is the move, especially at positions where you don't have elite talent. We've seen it with the Giants. We've seen it with the Rays. Platoon, platoon, platoon. I'm going to sell, but that's just because we don't know about the DH. If the DH is in, I buy. Isaiah Bryan 
Bryant at Isaiah Bryant 07. Vlad Jr. isn't a top five player in baseball. Tatis, Shohei, Trout, Acuna, Betts. Pains me to say, but I buy it. Vlad Jr. is probably a top five hitter in baseball, but this this weird thing again of playing first base kind of kills your value a little bit. I think you have to include Tatis. I think you have to include Trout. I think you have to include Shohei. You have to include either Acuna, Soto, Betts, two of those guys probably. You probably also have to include Jacob deGrom just because of how dominant he is pitching wise. Like I feel like that would be foolish to not include him. Vlad Jr. is very, very close, but top five, I buy he's not there yet. But boy, he's very, very good. And then the last one comes from Austin McGregor Baker at Austin underscore Baker 25. The Detroit Tigers will win the World Series within three years. So we're going to count three years as three seasons after this one. Because I think that's the only way to do this fair. Because this year, clearly they're not going to happen. 2022, 2023, 2024. I think there's a world where the Tigers could win the World Series in 2024. I buy it. Mic drop. Boom. No, I'm actually going to explain it though. I'm not done. I think that the Tigers could win a World Series within three years. I buy this and here's why. AJ Hinch, very good manager. This Tigers team has a lot of similar feelings of what the Astros were like before their great runs. While the Tigers may seem kind of far away to some of you because you don't know a lot of the names on the team right now, the reinforcements are coming and there's going to be some free agents coming. There's going to be some money being spent. This Tigers team, if they want it, have an opportunity probably on the back end of that three years, uh, not next year and probably not the year after. After. But you could be looking at a very similar look to what the Padres did. You be aggressive. You get a Carlos Correa. You get a top line pitcher to go along with Casey Mize, Tariq Skubal, Matt Manning. You got Torkelson. You got Riley Green. You got Akil Badu. You got Haas, who's going to be your catcher now. Willie Castro, as a guy who could float around the middle infield, isn't locked in, is great. Jonathan Scope's been really good. There's a world where the Tigers can win a World Series in the next three years. Boom. Stamp it. Buying it. Let's go, Tigers. I feel like I talked about the Midwest a lot this episode. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But we definitely had a lot of hot takes. Definitely a lot of opinions. I'd love to know what you guys think about my hot take opinions down in the comment section below, as well as make sure you drop some hot takes yourself for the next episode. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Drop me a follow on all my social media, draft neck mark links in the description. That's where I'll wrap up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This one over here, this is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.